Hello, Math 213, 221. So now the next step from our last lecture is to normally go into definite, indefinite integrals and area under the curve and what all that means. But something that both your books do through 213 and 221 is a lot of the problems actually use substitution before they even talk about it. And I want to do address that by just talking about substitution first and then we'll get into in the next lecture about definite and indefinite integrals and area under the curve. That's what we're going to do today. Substitution. And this is simply a method to get integrals into a place that we can solve them. So I want to first point out what it is you know at this point for integrals. So for math 213, you just got these first three here. And of course, 221, you do have all the trig functions. I'll just throw a couple cases in here. And we have our two properties. So this is what we know at this point. We have our power pattern, which is just the reverse of the derivative pattern. Uh, we have our exponential pattern. And then we have the log pattern. And for properties, remember, we can pull a constant outside the integral. So that's what this statement is saying. If we have a constant inside, we can pull it outside. Just like with uh, limits and derivatives, we can do that. And it, the integral also distributes cross plus and minus. So if we have the integral of two functions uh, and they're separated by plus or minus, then we can distribute the integral and that'll make life simpler for us. So I do want to start off with some simple examples here before we get into substitution. So let's just take the integral of a constant, integral of 2x. Uh, I'm sorry, just integral of 2. So we could use the first integral property here, prop is, um, labeling it as number 7 here in the lines. We can use this integral property. And we can say then, we can pull the 2 outside of the integral. And then we simply have the integral of 1. And now technically, this is a uh, power series integral because one is x to the zero. So if we go over our integral patterns, well, how do we reverse the derivative pattern we learned? Well, that's this line one I have over here on the right. And so if we recognize in the formula n for the integral, in this case, is a zero, and so we can write this as 2 times whatever our integral is going to be. And in this case, just looking at the integral pattern right here. So n is 0, so we'll have 1 times x to the 1. And then we always need our integration constant. And so that's just a simple use of this first pattern. Take a look at another example. Say we have a polynomial, x to the fifth here, and we want to integrate that. So again, we'll recognize first, remember it's, I think it's very important you understand what functions you're dealing with. So we have a power series, and then that helps us identify what integral pattern we're going to. So for a power, we'll identify n as five here, so then doing our integral, we'll have one-fifth, I'm sorry, one-sixth, because we're adding one when we integrate. And yes, remember with the derivative, we subtract one. Remember, this is the reverse process of that, integrating is. And there's our answer. Again, just coming from the, the integral pattern. Take a look at another one. It's a little bit more complicated. So first off, the 3 is a constant. So we can pull that outside the integral. And just stick it there. Again, we have a power series here. So we identify the n value of 2 fifths. So looking back at our integral pattern, we're identif identifying n as 2 fifths. So then we have, for doing the integral, 
our constant times what we get for the integral. So I'll write this one out a little bit more specifically so you can see. So it's going to be 1 over n. That's 1 over 2 fifths plus 1. And that's all going to be x raised to 2 fifths plus 1. And we always have our integration constant. And we do want to clean this up a little bit. So 3 times 1 in the numerator get us a 3. Uh, in the denominator, we have 2 fifths plus 1. So this is 2 fifths plus 5 fifths to get us 7 fifths. And then we'll have x raised to the 2 fifths plus 1, which is again 7 fifths. Plus our integration constant. And then finally, very rarely do you like seeing complex fractions like this, so we'd clean this up. Um, remember, division is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is e so division by seven fifths is equivalent by multiplying by five sevenths. So we can make this then. for our final cleaned up answer. Take a look at take a look at another example. So something looking a little bit more complicated. So first off, now it's up to you if you want to write all these steps out or not, but the derivative distributes and then our plus 3. That's the first thing we're definitely going to want to do. So we're always, our goal here is always try to get it back into one of our patterns. That's always our goal here. What can we do to get this back into our patterns so we know what the answer is for our integral? Looking back at this problem, these constants, we can pull outside the integral. So this 3 over here we can pull outside. And now we have these in our patterns. So our first integral here is e to the x, so that's pattern 2 here, base raised to an x. And the integral of e to the x is just itself, just like its derivative. And looking at the next integral, so we have a power series. In this case, we identify n as 1. So looking at our pattern 1 here for a power series. And we stick our integration constant out of that. Uh, sometimes people ask, do you need an integration constant for each integral? Well, technically there is, but we add all those constants together into just one constant. That's this commonly labeled C. But we'll get more into the meaning of C and, and definite inde indefinite integrals and area under the curve. The focus here really is to just get integrals. And then we'll get more to their meanings. Now I do want to point out really quickly that if we look at our answer here, remember, if we take the derivative of our answer, we will, if it's correct, uh, we will always get back to the function in the integral. So you see, if we take the derivative of 7e e to the x, we get 7e e to the x. And if we take the derivative of 3 halves x squared, well, the derivative means the 2 drops down, so that'll cancel out the half, and so we'll just have 3x, which is the original function we have. And of course, the, the derivative of c, a constant, is 0. So the answer you get, you can always check that derivative should be the same function, then, that you're integrating.
let's take a look at one more example here. So we want to identify the pattern that we see here. So first of all, 3 is a constant. So we can pull that outside the, func outside the integral. And we want to identify what function we have here. Now, this is a power series, but this is the special case because the integral of 1 over x is what leads us to log. So remember, the derivative of log is 1 over x. So integrating 1 over x will get us to log. So 1 over x, a little bit trickier to remember because some people will mistake it for the power series. Uh, notice, though, that in the 1 over x case, n is minus 1 because we would ultimately write this as x to the minus 1 here, which means n is minus 1. And if we have an n of minus 1 right here, we'll get division by 0. So there is a failure that happens if you do try to use the power series integral. So we have our constant times whatever we get for our integral. And we'll look at 1 over x. And that's our third pattern here. So the integral of 1 over x will just give us log of the base times uh, the log of the, of the function. Now the thing with the base here is you do have to be told what base you want. I mean, technically, we can make up any base we want here. And it's a correct answer. So in the homework, they would have to tell you what base to take a derivative 2. Uh, what is the norm though is actually base e is what technically or is usually the norm with your homework. So instead of this base being 3 you can make it anything you want. The homework tends to prefer base e though and log of e is 1 and log of base e is ln. So this would be the common way to see it in the homework, using base e for log. So that was a quick refresher of what we did last video. So let's get into what we're going to do today with substitution. Let's take a function like we have here. So we have a power series. So we have our variable in the base raised to some power. So it's a power series, so it's pattern 1. But notice it's not quite pattern 1, because pattern 1 says it has to be x raised to a number. It doesn't say anything about a function being here. It has to be x raised to a number. But if we look at our problem, it's not just x raised to a number. It's this entire parentheses raised to a number. So our goal here is to get this to somehow look like our integral pattern. And in this case, we can do that with what's called substitution. Is we can make a substitution. And really what we're going to do is we're going to change the variable here. And u is commonly used. You're going to see that in both 213, 221 books for the letter they choose. U in this case, if we choose it to be 5 minus x, if we just choose u to be that and substitute that into the integral, so now instead of 5 minus x, we just have u. Well, notice u to the fifth is in the pattern of 1, where it's our variable raised to a constant. So we have our u, our variable raised to a constant. Now we do have a letter problem here because we have a u and the integral says with respect to x. So we do have to make these two letters be the same. And we can always get that dx part by taking u and taking its derivative. 
So we're going to take the derivative on both sides of u. And the derivative on the right with respect to x, so the derivative of 5 uh, uh, constant is 0. And the derivative of minus x would be minus 1. And this is our derivative then for u with respect to x. And what we can do with this is treat it like a fraction and solve for dx. So if we multiply both sides by dx, multiply both sides by dx, then we get this expression. And then solving for dx gives us this expression. So now that we have an expression for dx, we can plug that into the integral. So we know dx is minus dy. So we have dx then is minus dy, I mean du. And the minus is a constant, a minus means minus 1. And so we can pull that outside the integral. And then here is our integral. And now it's perfectly in the power series form. And now we can integrate this. So we know this will be our minus, which is our constant, times whatever we get for our integral. So we identify here n is 5. And looking back at our integral over here, we have n is 5. So that means we're going to have 1 over 6 here. x to the 6. And then plus our integration constant. Whoops. I put a u, uh, x there, but technically it's still u. So still u. Jumping the gun there a little bit. So we did our integral. How did we do that? Well, we just looked at our integral pattern for power series. And remember, that's the reverse of, de of taking the derivative. We do want our final answer back in terms of x, though. And so to do that, uh, we have to plug x back into u then. So we see this is minus 1, 6. But instead of u to the 6, we're going to plug back in uh, the x for that. So u is 5 minus x. And all that is raised to the 6. And plus our integration constant. So we started with an expression that wasn't, wasn't quite in the form we wanted. But then we made a substitution with u equals 5 minus x, which transformed the integral into something simpler than here. It transformed it just into u to the fifth, which is then an integral we can do because we know the integral for a power series. And then once we had our integral, we substituted back in for what u is so we could get it back in terms of x. So let's try another one. e to the 2x. Now this is so close to being into our form. Our form is e to the x. So it's just this 2 that's in the way. And we want to make subs, some substitution to get rid of that 2. And we could do that 
if we define u to be 2x. So then we can take that u, and instead of 2x, we're going to have a u there. And now this is in, in the form that we want. So a number raised to our variable. That's pattern 2 for our integrals. Um, but we do have a letter mismatch here. We have u, and the integral wants with respect to x. So we want to get these two letters to be the same here. So we need to make a substitution for dx. And we can always get that from the derivative of u. So we'll take the derivative with respect to x. And the derivative of 2x is 2. So we took the derivative of u, and we'll write it in differential notation like this, because then we can use it as fractions to solve for dx. So we'll multiply both sides by dx, divide both sides by 2, and we have our expression for dx. And we'll take, the, take this expression for dx and plug it into our integral then to get rid of this dx here. So we know dx is du over 2. And over 2, it means a half, which is a constant. And so we can pull that outside the integral. And so through substitution, we were able to get our integral then into the exponential form, a base raised to a variable, which is exactly what we want, base raised to a variable, because this integral we know then. And then we can write what that answer is. So the integral of e is itself, just like its derivative. And our integration constant. Now if you do look at the integral pattern, it does have the, this is for any base b. But we are choosing b to be e. So remember, natural log of e is 1. So for base e, this whole term here, this whole factor is just 1. So that's why you don't see it here. And then finally, we do want to get this back into x. So we can state then what the final answer is. So we got our integral of 1 half and e to the u, but instead of u, we're going to plug back in what u is in terms of x. That's 2x. u is 2x. So we'll plug that back in. And now we have our answer in terms of the variable x. And you can check that. By taking the derivative of our answer, we'll get the function that's in the integral. Let's try another one. So 1 over 3x minus 5. Most, well, many of the times in your homework, <laughs> it's hard to say in general because integrating is much harder than taking the derivative. There's no set pattern I can say where if you always do this, you'll always get to an answer. Like with the derivative, we have the product rule, the quotient, the chain, you always employ those things, you're always going to get yourself to a derivative. It's not that way with integrating, um, much more challenging, and you'll learn more about that in your next calculus classes. But for now, when you have a, a reciprocal function like this, this tends to be pattern 3 here then, the 1 over x pattern that leads to a log. Tends to be, I can't guarantee that that will always be the case but it tends to be for the homework we're doing right now so i'm just trying to give you some guidance on on how you would proceed with these so our goal is to get this to look like pattern three just one over x or one over some letter and we can do that then with a substitution 
if we simply say u is the entire denominator, and then we can replace that. So instead of the 3x minus 5, we're going to call that entire denominator u. Now we'll always have this letter mismatch here. We do need to also substitute dx. And we can always get dx from the derivative of u. So we'll take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of 3x minus 5, so the derivative of 3x is 3. The derivative of minus 5 is 0. And then once we have this derivative, we will use it to solve for dx. And then we can take that for dx and substitute it into our integral then. So dx is one-third du. And the one-third is a constant, so we can pull that outside the integral. And so now our integral is written in a form that we know, one over a letter, is pattern 3, which leads us to the log function. So we have our constant, just multiplies whatever our answer is. And 1 over u will lead us then to the natural log of u. And again, for 213, 221, both your books are all using base e. So you'll get the natural log here. And that's our answer for u, but ultimately we want the answer in terms of x. And so to get that, we'll just substitute back in for u. So we did this integral, we figured out it's one-third log of u, but instead of u, we're going to plug back in what u is. u is 3x minus 5. And then there is our final answer in terms of x, the answer that we want. Let's try another one. So first off, got a constant there. Let's pull it outside the integral. But we don't have to worry about it till we're done. And we do have a power series here. How do we know that? Because our input is in the base, and then our exponent is a constant. So that's the pattern 1. And when we want to make a substitution, that will get this whole base of 6x minus 1 just to be a letter. And we can do that by just calling that entire base u. So we'll say that whole 6x minus 1, we'll call that whole thing u. And then we can make that substitution. And we do have to make a substitution for dx as well. And we can always get that from the derivative of u. So if we take the derivative of u with respect to x, so the derivative of 6x is 6, and the derivative of minus 1 is 0. So there's our derivative, and we'll write it in this differential notation, because then we can treat it like fractions and solve for dx. So we'll multiply both sides by dx, divide by 6, And now we have our substitution for dx. So we see dx is 1 6 du. The 1 6 is a constant, so we can pull that outside the integral. 
2 times the 6 is 1 third. We can simplify that. So here's the integral we're doing. So we have our power series, a letter raised to a constant, which is pattern 1. And so now we know this answer. So u to the fifth, identifying n as 5. So I get to say 1 over 6, u to the sixth. And we'll clean this up a little bit. One third times one six is one eighteenth. And there is our answer in terms of u. Now, ultimately, we do want it in terms of x because this is what we're ultimately solving for. And so we'll simply take the integral we just did and just figure it out and put it in terms of x again. So 1 over 18, but instead of u to the 6, we're going to have what u is, it's 6x minus 1. All that is raised to the 6, and then plus our integration constant. And there's our answer. And how do you know? Well, you can take the derivative of the answer, and it'll get back to the function that we're integrating. So substitution is actually a quite useful technique that for 221 you'll learn much more about in the next calculus class. Uh, 213, you'll see it a little bit going forward in your next one. But there's many things we can do with substitution that uh, we're only going to talk about some, though. And I want to talk about the strategies that are employed with uh, the, the problems in your book. So let me pull up an example here. So something that looks much more complicated. I want to look at our first strategy I have listed here. And again, these are strategies. These aren't guaranteed ways to get to an answer. This is, again, part of the challenge with integrals uh, compared to derivatives. So these are some strategies to try. And if they work, then they work. And if they don't, you'll have to try something else. So our first strategy is if we have polynomials that are only separated by one degree, then choosing the higher degree tends to work. So if we look at our integral here, in the numerator we have a polynomial that's to power to degree three, and in the numerator here we have this polynomial that's to degree four. So four, three separated by one, one difference. When that's the case, then choosing the higher order polynomial tends to work. So we're going to choose x to the fourth plus one. Now why do we choose the higher order polynomial? Because its derivative will get us the lower order polynomial. So if we take the derivative of u with respect to x, so x to the fourth, that derivative is 4x cubed. And the derivative of 1 is 0. So here is a 4x cubed, which is also in our original integral. And we're eventually going to want to solve this for dx. So we'll multiply both sides by dx. Divide both sides by 4x cubed. And now we have our substitution pieces. We have what u equals and what dx equals. And we'll substitute that into the integral. So we're saying x to the fourth plus 1 is u. And dx is going to be 1 over 4x cubed 
BU. So notice, notice what happens here then is these 4x cubes cancel. And so through this U substitution, we're able to get this integral to something that we know. Again, here's our power series integral. And if you like, it's always a good thing to write this maybe back into power series form so you can see things clearly. And now that integral we can do. So we know this is going to be 1 over minus 2 plus 1. And then u, remember, for integrating, we're going to add 1 now. So that's minus 2 plus 1 to get us a minus 1. And then this fraction in front, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. And that's our answer in terms of u. And now that we have it in terms of u, we can put it back into terms of x. So we'll just take our integral. And we know then that this must equal minus u. But we're saying u is x to the fourth plus 1. And it says all of this is raised to the minus 1. Now, real quick, this is the same thing as writing it as a fraction. Some may prefer that. Perfectly fine. And there is our answer, then, in terms of x. And if you're not convinced of that, you can take the derivative. And it should get us back, then, to the function that we're integrating. Let's try another one of this first strategy here. So let's say we have this integral. Two polynomials being multiplied together here. So here's a degree 1. Here's a degree 2, only separated by one degree. So what tends to work here is to choose u to be that higher degree. So in this case, that's the polynomial that's 3x squared plus 4x. And once you choose u, uh, you're always going to want to take the derivative of u then, because we need the expression for dx. So 3x squared, that derivative is 6x, and the derivative of 4x is 4. And then once we have the derivative, we'll solve it for dx. And now we have u, and now we have dx, and we can make our substitution. So we're saying instead of 3x squared plus 4x, instead of that being raised to the fourth, we're going to say that's just u. And then for dx, we found that that is 1 over... 6x plus 4 du. Now if we look at the denominator here, 6x plus 4, there's actually a common factor there of 2 that we can factor out.
And that's cool because that 3x plus 2 will cancel out this other 3x plus 2. One half is a constant, so we can pull that outside the integral. And so we got the, our initial starting point of these two polynomials all simplified down to just u to the fourth, which is our power series then. And that integral we know. half times a fifth, clean that up a little bit to be a tenth. And there is our answer in terms of u. So we took our integral, we changed the variable to u. Doing that made the integral then solvable for us. And now that we solve the integral, we will put it back in terms of x. So for our answer, we got one-tenth. But instead of u to the fifth, we're going to plug back in what u is. It's 3x squared plus 4x. And all that is raised to the fifth. And there's our final answer. And again, if you're not convinced of that, you can take the derivative. And the derivative will get us back then to the function that we're integrating. So here was two examples of this first strategy. If you have polynomials and they differ by one degree, choose the higher degree. Now another outcome could be is that they are of the same degree. Now in this case we have x to the power 1 and inside the parentheses we also have an x to the power 1. So this is strategy 2. If the polynomials are the same degree then choose the more complicated one and that means the one with the most term. So we'll choose the x minus 1. And we'll take the derivative So the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of minus 1 is 0. This then gets us our expression for dx. So dx, in this case, simply equals du. And we're going to plug this into our integral. So instead of x minus 1, we're saying that all that is u now. And dx is du. But we have a problem here because we still have this x hanging around. Next problem, we need all our letters to be u here. So how do we get rid of that x? Well, we go back to our u statement again. And we can actually solve this for x. We'll add 1 to both sides. And we have then an expression for x that we can plug in. And so we'll do that. So we know x is u plus 1. Now this definitely doesn't look like a power series yet. In other words, it's not simply a letter raised to a number. We still got this parentheses here. And we can deal with that by a distribution because the integral distributes. So first off, we can distribute the u to the 10th into the parentheses. So I'd get a u to 11th plus a u to the 10th. And the integral, then, will distribute across these two terms, then.
And now we have two integrals that we can do. Now they're both in the power series form. So that's a pretty long line there. Let me just cut that off. So this integral we now know. So the integral of u to the 11th is u to the 12th. And the integral of u to the 10th, adding 1, makes it to the 11 then. And then we always have our integration constant for these indefinite integrals. Now, of course, we ultimately want this back in terms of x. So we need to set all those u's back into x. So looking at the integral we did, we have 1 12th. But instead of u, remember our substitution for u, u is x minus 1. So now we'll plug that back in. So u is x minus 1. And that is all raised to the 12th. And the next thing we figured out was 1 11th. u to the 11th. But instead of u, we've got x minus 1. And all that's raised to the 11th plus our integration constant. And there is our final answer. And again, if you're not convinced of that, you can take the derivative of the answer and it'll get you the function that we're integrating. Let's try another example of this second strategy here. So again, we have an x to the power 1 in the numerator, and the polynomial here in the denominator is also to power 1. So we, there are two polynomials to the same power. So we'll choose the more complicated expression, which is the one with more terms. So u, u equals the x plus 1. And once we've made a definition for u, take its derivative with respect to x, so the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 1 is 0. That gives us the relationship then for dx and du, which is what we need for our substitution. And now that we have our pieces, our substitutions, we'll plug them into the integral. So instead of x plus 1, we're saying that's u, and dx is du. So again, we're stuck with this problem that we have this x sitting here that didn't cancel out. And we can make a substitution from u again by solving it for x. So if we subtract 1 from both sides, we have an expression for x in terms of u then, which we can plug into our integral. So x is u minus 1. So does it look like we're getting somewhere? Maybe. Doesn't actually look much different from our starting point. However, um, it is actually getting somewhere. And at this point, we'll want to decompose this into fractions. Not something we've done too many times. I, I've mentioned it here and there. Hopefully you remember that now or that, that once in a while sometimes. But here's another case of decomposing the fractions. So we're going to divide each numerator term by the denominator.
So we decompose this into its two fractions. And now this first fraction we can clean up a little bit because in the denominator we have u to a half and in the numerator we have u to the one. So one minus a half will get us just u to the half. Remember, u to the half, we do want this in exponents. Whoop. We do want this in exponents here. So square root does mean power of a half. Now this square root in this fraction is in the denominator. So that'll get a minus when we switch it into the numerator. And so the last thing we need to do here is then distribute the integral. And then it'll be into two integrals that we know how to do. So all that substitution, it's tough sometimes to know if what you're doing is getting you where you need to go. That's tough sometimes. Uh, sometimes you just have to go through all the steps and see if it works. So pretty tough right here at this point to see if that's getting anywhere. But once we decompose into fractions and then distribute the integral, it's now in a doable state. So here we have two power series integrals. So we'll have for the first integral, one over a half plus one. That's all gonna be raised to u, which is a half plus one. So a half plus one will get us to three halves. And then our minus the next integral so now we have n is minus a half here. We'll do 1 over minus a half plus 1. And all that is going to be raised to u. Remember, we're, we're adding 1 when we integrate. So 1 minus a half, we're going to say positive half there. And let's clean this up a little bit. These denominators, a half plus one is three halves. And three halves is multiplying by the reciprocal, two thirds. Uh, this next fraction, one minus a half, is just gonna be a positive half. And then the reciprocal, of that is two. So there's our integral that we did. We did the integrating. And now we want to put this back in terms of x. So we'll take where we started. And we know all this got us to 2 thirds. u to the 3 halves. But instead of u, we're going to plug back in what u is. u is x plus 1. So 2 thirds u to the 3 halves minus 2 to the u. But again, instead of u, we have x plus 1. That's all raised to the half. And then plus our integration constant. Or our final answer. And again, if that's something you're not convinced of, you can take the derivative of our answer and it'll get you back to the function we're integrating. You can always check. So there was 
two examples of the second strategy. If the polynomials are the same degree, then choose a more complicated one. And notice that you have to substitute twice here. So we had to do u equals x plus 1 over here. We had to make that substitution. And then we had to substitute again by solving for x. So when the polynomials are the same degree, you end up doing these two substitutions to get where you're going. Let's try, though, an exa some examples of this third strategy. And this is almost always true for all your homework problems. Uh, if there's a log function, choose the log function. So pretty simple rule there. Uh, well, I guess it's not a rule. Again, this is not something that's always true. Uh, it's just a strategy that can work many times. So if there's a log function, choose u to be that log function. And then once we have u, we'll take the derivative. So the derivative of log x is 1 over x. And once we have that derivative, we'll solve for dx. So we'll multiply both sides by dx. And multiply both sides by x. And now we have a, our u substitution, our dx substitution, and we'll plug that into the integral. So instead of log x, we have u. And instead of dx, we have x du. And now notice these x's cancel. We have x over x. And so those cancel. And we're left with the integral then of 1 over u. And that is our log. And once we've done the integral, we want to put it back in terms of x. So we know this integral is log of u, but we define u to be log of x. And there's our answer. And again, if you're not convinced of that, you can take the derivative and check. So this derivative does have a chain rule in there. So the derivative of log, remember, is always 1 over the argument. So there's where the 1 over log x comes from. And then you have to take the derivative of the argument. That's the chain rule. And the derivative of log x gets us 1 over x is where that other 1 over x comes from. Let's check out another one with log. So here we go. You see a log function? Choose the log function. Now, it do is square root of x. Remember, the square root means an exponent of a half. And also, remember with log properties, that this half, we can put in front of the log. That was the power rule for logs. And once we have our definition for u, we will take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. And the derivative of log x is 1 over x. And once we have the derivative, we'll solve it for dx. So we'll multiply both sides by 2x. Multiply both sides by dx. And we have our expression for dx. And now we'll substitute u in and dx in to our integral. So remember, log of square root of x, we're calling that whole thing u. 
And then dx, we figured out dx is 2x du. And then we have these x's that cancel. So x over x. The 2 is a constant, so we can pull that outside the integral. And it all simplifies down to just integrating u, which is a power series integral. So that's just going to be 2 times whatever we, we get for our integral. And the integral of u is 1 over 2u squared. So 2 times a half, those will cancel out. And there's our integral complete. Now that we've completed the integral, we'll put it back in terms of x. So we know this integral equals u squared, but we're saying u is 1 half log x. And all that is squared. I do want to point out here really quick that this one half we could put back as the exponent so just another way to write this answer that somebody might do so we could write this back as log x to the one half and then x to the one half does mean square root So some people may prefer to write the answer like that. Either way, both correct answers. So these three strategies will actually get you through almost all of the homework problems. There's another case I noticed in going through them that if all of those fail, those three, all those three things fail, then try first decomposing into fraction. Let me give an example of that. So let's say we have something like this here. So the polynomials are not uh, of one degree difference, so that's not the first strategy. They aren't the same degree, so that's not the second strategy. There's no log function, so that's not the third strategy. So all that has failed. So let's try decomposing this into fractions first. So that means we're going to take x divided by x to the fifth, and then we'll do 1 minus 1 divided by x to the fifth. So write that back into fractions. So by doing that, we'd have x over x to the fifth, which is 1 over x to the fourth. And then that is minus 1 over x to the fifth. It doesn't look like that may be helping us, but we do have a greatest common factor that we can pull out of this here. So we, they both have an x to the fourth that we can pull out. We'll get that greatest common factor out of there. I'm going to write that there so it doesn't get too long. So all we're doing here, decomposing into fractions, pulling out a greatest common factor. And now we can do the square root of that. So the square root of x to the fourth would be x squared. So taking the square root of that, 
get us 1 over x squared. And now notice where we're at here in this last expression here that we have two polynomials, x squared and x to 1, that are only separated by 1. So that's our first strategy here, kind of. I say kind of because technically these aren't polynomials. They're rational functions here. And a polynomial is in the denominator. So this says choose the higher order. But in this case, we're actually going to choose the lower order because we're dealing with reciprocals here. So remember, that has to do with the derivative. If you take the derivative of minus 2, that goes to minus 3. So we want this, so if we take the derivative of this x to the minus 1, that'll go to our x to the minus 2. So for this case, we want to choose u to be then everything that's under the square root here. And then 1 over x is x to the minus 1. Let's just write it like that. A little easier to uh, do the derivative on. Because once we have u, we're going to take the derivative. So the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative of minus x to the minus 1. So the minus 1 and the minus will cancel, uh, multiply out. And the minus 1 goes to minus 2. And then we'll use that to solve for dx. We'll multiply both sides by dx. And we'll multiply both sides times x to the positive 2. And we have our expression for dx. We have our expression for u, our expression for dx. And we're going to plug that all in to our integral then. So here is our integral form that we simple, we decompose into fractions on a greatest common factor, cleaned it up a little bit, got it prepped for integrating, you could say. And so we found that this is going to be a 1 over x squared. And then we're taking the square root of u. Because we're calling u everything in this under the square root here. And this is times dx. And we figured out dx has to be x squared du. Now, crucially, because this is crucial here, that these x squareds cancel. That's crucial because now the integral is in a state that we know how to solve. So it's just a power series. Remember, square root means power half. So when we do this integral, we're going to have 1 over 1 half plus 1. And then u, we're adding 1 to the exponent for integrating. So that's going to be 3 halves, uh, 1 plus a half. And our integration constant. And we'll clean up this fraction a little bit here. 1, one half plus 1 is 3 halves. And then we have the reciprocal of that. So that's two-thirds. And there's our completed integral. Of course, we want the final answer to be in terms of x. And so we'll simply take our answer from u and plug back in what u is. So we know u, we made the substitution that u is 1 minus 1 over x. 
So instead of u to the 3 halves, we have 1 minus 1 over x. All of that is raised to the 3 halves plus our integration constant. And again, if you're not convinced of this answer, you can take the derivative, take the derivative of the answer, and it'll get you back to where you started, the function that you're integrating. So just some quick closing remarks here. These strategies I've listed here will actually get you through all your homework problems, but in a bigger picture of things in, in all of calculus, these are basically your, your starter strategies. So, you know, if you're in your career with calculus and you're confronted with an integral, this would be your first strategy you'd probably try because it's the simplest thing to do. And if it works, then it works and you get to your answer. But um, if this doesn't work, then you have to go on to other strategies. So I want to stress that there's by no means any guarantee that these strategies will always work because they won't. Just in a bigger picture of things, you're learning the first strategies to solve integrals. And in your next calculus classes, you'll learn the other, some other strategies. So I'll see you in the next video.